Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, brought to you, as always, by the GSMC Sports Network. I hope you liked that Euros Fantasy Weekend recap. I really enjoyed talking to you about all the breakout players, the guys who really wanted to show up and show out in this tournament. But let us transition to a segment that, as the season winds down in terms of basketball, we're looking ahead a little bit early to fantasy basketball season 24 to 25. And all these stars, and the question comes up, who are going to be the risers and fallers in terms of fantasy? Whether it be young stars who really haven't gotten the opportunity to show themselves, or guys who have really dominated in every facet of the game, but are kind of aging out of the league and aging out of their respective teams. I really want to see how these this whole volatility in terms of fantasy plays out. So without further ado, let's jump right into this segment. It should be a fantastic one. So as the league changes and as more young talent is getting seen, developing into squads that might be contending for play-in spots and wanting to grow and look ahead to the distant future, I think the risers are really telling. I think that when I go over these names, they're names that you might not know just yet, names that might have been rookies who have had breakout seasons, names that are looking to have bigger roles in their teams. But overall, I'm really excited. So without further ado, let's get right into the risers for next season. Looking at a player in Vince Williams who is in a Memphis Grizzlies squad that really, really is... In a period of time where they are transitioning to a core group of players that they think they can rely on. And John Morant, if he stays in the court and gets his head in the game. Desmond Bain, a fantastic three-point shooter. And then Jaron Jackson, a rim protector and dominant paint presence. And Vince Williams is just like a combination of all three players. But maybe does not see as much of the time on the court as they do. And so... Vince Williams, a potential top 100 player in my mind, honestly, because of, because of his efficiency. In short amount of time, he can three-point shoot, rebound the ball. There's a spark plug for a Memphis Grizzlies team that's looking to build around that core, looking to feed off of what that core does best, and draft players who are really going to help in all the areas that those guys are good in. And Vince Williams is one of those guys in my mind's eye that I really am excited to see grow and develop in this league. Coming up next, we have a player in Ayo Dasunmu who is on a Chicago Bills team that I'm going to talk about a bit later in terms of falling that really does have this kind of stuck mindset. Do they want to transition to their youthful players such as Kobe White and Ayo Dasunmu? Or do they want to retain guys like DeMar DeRozan and Nikola Vosovic and see how far they take them? Obviously, it has not worked out in recent years. But it is what it is for the Chicago Bulls. And Ayo Sunmu could be one of those guys they might focus on in the future should they want to build around a younger core. And I think they definitely should do that. So Ayo Sunmu, he is one of those guys who is definitely one of the more intriguing players in the squad. But 17 points per game, 3.3 rebounds per game, 4.9. So you can see the fact that he has elevated his game in a team that has those players who are really intriguing to see and look out for. But ultimately, I do feel as if he is one of those guys who just needs more time within the rotation to fully develop and fully get realized as a player because a lot of people might not know who he is due to the fact that Boston, I mean, Chicago insists on retaining guys who are kind of aging out of this team and the time is now for Chicago in my honest opinion to transition I just think they need a new feel to their squad without the pressure of being in a crowded Eastern Conference where they aren't raking any headway so I would assume look for him to have a fantastic career in a very guard heavy team look for him to kind of be that second option maybe off the bench for them Now let's go to the Golden State Warriors because they are a very weird team. Usually 
in terms of Golden State Warriors, we don't necessarily talk about great centers from them in the past, whether it be guys like Zaza Pachulia or Festus Ezeli. They were just there to kind of be integrated to help the core of Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. But in terms of Jonathan Kaminga, you might have a gem on your hands if you're the Golden State Warriors and how you utilize him, especially in a Western Conference that is getting more big man heavy. And Jonathan Kaminga, you might have found a guy who's not just a Zaz Pachulia prototype or Festus Ezeli prototype, but a guy who can really help in terms of point production, rebounds. And in a Golden State Warriors team that should transition but does still have that talent and stuff in Clay, I really think that Jonathan Kaminga could help this team if they maintain that core. 16.3 points per game, 4.9 rebounds, 2.1 assists. 0.7 blocks, 0.5 steals. Really intriguing player, 53% shooting from the floor. So I think that Jonathan Kaminga isn't just a pushover in that Golden State center position. I think he's very versatile. He's not just a scrub who you can toss aside when you look at centers. He's not necessarily a starting center in a fantasy rotation. I think he is a good backup option. But that should just about do it for the risers. Let's go over, like I said, to the fallers. The fallers are guys who I really think just don't have a good injury history or a history of being guys you can rely upon in terms of how they play. I think that ultimately they're on teams that want to contend but really have to make the decision between young stars and then guys who you know they can build around and really hope to have a good future in both conferences. And so let's start off with a team I talked about with Iowa Sunmu, the Chicago Bulls, and mainly that whole rotation of Kobe White, Nikola Vucevic, and DeMar DeRozan. Now, if that's your big three, it doesn't really show much promise. It doesn't really scare me, especially in a crowded Eastern Conference where obviously the Bulls can sneak into the play-in tournament at any given time, but that's just their limit. That's just their ceiling at this point. They don't necessarily have the mindset to go higher and the big question for them is it adds the detriment you know of these young players in Kobe White and Iota Sumo who are really exciting and I really want to see more of when you have guys like Nikola Vucevic and DeMar DeRozan who don't really progress you they're stuck in the mindset of we just want to get into the play-in tournament and we don't want to compete because obviously it might not be our year but in four or five years, you're going to want to find some guys if you're the Chicago Bulls and you're still stuck in that play-in mindset to make that transition. And so I just feel as if Vuce and Rosen will continue to decline and Iota Sunmu will continue to rise and it's up to the Chicago Bulls to decide who they covet more because of the fact that they're stuck in the stasis and they're not going to get out of that mindset. And so... That's why I think that the Chicago Bulls, as a collective unit in fantasy, will decline outside of a guy in Iota Sunmu who really deserves more playing time. And so that is the question mark for the Chicago Bulls. And then we're going to transition to a guy in Chris Middleton who is just in a Milwaukee Bucks squad that doesn't really have a place for him anymore. Obviously, they want to keep Giannis there for as long as possible. They just signed Damian Lillard. So they want that to be their duo. And obviously, it's looking very much like Chris Middleton is going to not have an extended stay there. Just because of the injuries catching up to him and the fact of the matter is he's just aging out of the squad. Obviously, you can make the same case for Damian Lillard, but his style of play and his abilities whether as a starter or off the bench for Milwaukee, have shown that his value on on the offensive end far outweighs what uh, injured Chris Middleton can give you. And so I feel as if Chris Middleton needs to find, A, a different team that really respects his uh, assets as a player and doesn't overlook him, or B, see if he can make the case for being in a big three. And so... Ultimately, I'm really excited to see how that goes, but that should just about do it for this segment. Coming up next, we are going to be taking a look at the defending champions in terms of fantasy with Italy, Italia, Forza Italia, the Diazzurri. They're an exciting team with a lot of defensive talent, a lot of attacking talent. You don't want to miss that segment. We should be right back with that 
it should be a very good one.